2001. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five world championships in a row. Three with Honda. Then the move to Yamaha and two more. Proving that the rider, not the bike, makes the difference. Proving, perhaps, that Valentino Rossi is the greatest motorcycle racer of all time. But then, 2006, machine problems, human errors, and injuries. While Nicky Hayden is on a roll, racking up victories, podiums, and points, taking the contest all the way to the final race in Valencia. Holding his nerve to the end, the Kentucky kid seizes the crown as Rossi slips and falls. Loser. Well, what is it that racers say about second place? And now they're on him, the new breed. Younger, hungrier, faster, fresher like never before. Casey Stoner, the fastest rider Rossi's ever encountered. He wins 10 races in 2007. Rossi, just four. A new low for the Italian. A stunning triumph for the Australian. Spain's Danny Pedrosa is the runner-up. In third place, Valentino Rossi. Third and hurt. Three broken bones in his hand after a vicious crash in practice for the final race caused by a machine problem. He makes it to the start in Valencia, but not to the finish. Another machine problem. Adding insult to injury, Yamaha signs Jorge Lorenzo as their second rider for 2008. For the future, in other words. Now the enemy is in the building. Lorenzo arrives in the Yamaha garage to find that Rossi's had a wall built down the middle of it to shut out his so-called teammate. But he can't build a wall on the track. Lorenzo takes pole at his first MotoGP race in Qatar. Easy. He's on the podium at the second race in Spain and wins the third in Portugal. Easy. And then he crashes. And crashes. And crashes. and puts himself in hospital. But Casey Stoner is still there. After some teething trouble with the 2008 Ducati, the reigning world champion is going faster than ever. A three-win blitz in mid-season, blocking Rossi's title charge. Time to fight back. Laguna Seca. A duel in the California sun. As close to a fist fight as you can get on a motorcycle. Some of the passing maneuvers were maybe a little bit too much and past the point of fair or aggressive. We make a lot of overtaking, uh, quite aggressive, but uh, we never touch each other. My style to race is try to never give up. Anyway, I enjoy the battle. Stoner and his team don't like it but everybody else does. The Australian falters. Two crashes at Bruno and Misano. And worse, a wrist injury. Rossi is relentless. He wins six of the remaining eight races. Stoner, two. The Italian is king again and making history. Only one rider that other Italian god, Giacomo Agostini, has ever recaptured the crown after losing it two years in a row. Agostini managed it once in 1975, but he finished seventh the following season and retired the year after that. In 2009, Valentino Rossi sets out to win it again. A new record in his sights and no thoughts of retirement in his head. 
there are only three problems. Jorge Lorenzo, Casey Stoner, and Danny Pedrosa. It's time to go racing, and Casey Stoner is ready. He had an operation to fix his wrist in November. He's on an all-new Ducati. He was fastest at the pre-season test in March. And now he's qualified half a second clear of Rossi. But he does have one worry. This year, the fuel allowance for the race has been cut by one litre. Ducati are not totally sure that their bike will make the distance. Stoner makes a lightning start, then improvises economy mode. Beginning the race, I was trying to run more corner speed and, and keep the bike flowing in a higher gear so we, we didn't use so much fuel. With 10 laps to go, Stoner is two seconds ahead of Rossi. We know that Stoner is very fast from the beginning. For one part of the race, I was able to, to go like him, but not for all the race distance. What Rossi doesn't know is that Stoner has been riding conservatively. With seven laps to go and fuel enough in the tank, the Australian shows Rossi what he can do. Rossi's still fighting. Seven laps to go. Time to shake him off. In the next four laps, open the gap to over five seconds. <laughs> 